Hi and welcome to this webinar about Inventor 2016 and the new AnyCAD capability that uh, this gives us. My name is Chris Atherton, I'm one of the Senior Applications Engineers here at Symmetry in the UK, part of the CADQ group. Um, I say in this video we're going to look at AnyCAD. AnyCAD is uh, new to Inventor 2016, so if you're on 2015 or 14, don't forget that you'll need to upgrade to get access to this functionality. AnyCAD is the ability to import and reuse data from most of the main CAD systems and use that data within Inventor. Now, you may be thinking, I can already do that. I can take a SolidWorks file in 2015, I can import that into Inventor and it will convert it. Um, that becomes an inventor part and I can use that in my design. Well, yes, um, you can do that and you can still do that in 2016. But in 2016 what we can also do is take that SOLIDWORKS file and just use it in our design. So rather than import it every time, we just open it up and place it and constrain it as we would any other part file. The beauty about doing this and using that native file is that if that SOLIDWORKS or CATIA file or whatever type it is gets updated, it will update inside Inventor. Now, it's not just the 3D models that are important. Um, we can pull in data associatively from lots of different systems here, or we can import from lots of other systems. Um, we have many different ways of pulling that data in. But the 3D data is not the be all and end all. One of the big things we have to think about is our bill of materials as well. So AnyCAD using some new XMLs that are stored as part of our design data allows us to create mappings between CATIA, Creo, NX and SOLIDWORKS to Inventor so that we can use these properties within our design as well. So if I use a SOLIDWORKS data, its title, part number, description, revision, cost, etc. will all be appearing in my bill of materials. So let's take a quick look at that. So here I've got uh, an inventor model. It's a, a truck. I'm going to just open up the tail lift for this. And that tail lift is coming in, in this example, from another CAD system. So I'm going to place in an important CAD system. And you can see here I've got some SOLIDWORKS files. If I pull open up a uh, SOLIDWORKS file, you can see I get two options. I get the option to convert it to an inventor model, as I could in 2015, or I can use it as a reference model. We can load the model very quickly um, and use the options here to turn on and off various components that we may not want to see. In this case, I'm going to just show everything, and I'm going to ensure I'm on reference and hit OK. That pulls in the model, I can place it like an inventor component, position it wherever I want to, and then using our joints or our constraints, we can constrain this into position. So I could take this point to there, and add a, cons uh, a, a rotational constraint, apply that. I could take this lower beam, and I could associate it with this piston here, let's add a cylindrical constraint on there and hit OK. And you can see that this component is now slotted into place. In our model browser, it's not converted it. We've got a new icon. We can see that it's an imported icon. We can break the link or edit the import should we need to. But for all intents and purposes, it is treated like a normal CAD file, an inventor CAD file. If I come into this model and do an interference analysis, that solid geometry from that SOLIDWORKS part, as well as the data in the inventor model, all gets taken into account. So that's great, we've seen there's an interference. Well, AnyCAD doesn't just allow us to use the data, it will adapt as the data adapts. So I'm just going to cheat a little, I've got a little um, script file, which when I run just swaps out this A file with this B one, just uh, so we can see the change in data. But as that file updates or is swapped out, so maybe someone's emailed you a design change and you've overwritten the file, or maybe someone's actually changed the SOLIDWORKS data, I'll get an update button in Inventor. And when I click on that, that will update within my design. 
that's great that's associative changes that's what we we should have and what we we, we need really but it's not everything as I mentioned before if I look at my bill of materials and I go down to the bottom here I can see the solver where it's following my bomb and I can see that currently the description is just a dash if I come into my scripts here I just swap that file out for another one we can see that as that data updates in SolidWorks or as we get new data off our customer we may find that description comes through into our BOM. That's great because it means that as we put this data into Vault we've got something we can search about, uh, search through. So if I take a look at Vault then, Vault obviously we've got Vault Basic which comes with Inventor, Vault Workgroup or Intermediate Product, Vault Professional or Top End Product and Vault Office which is for non-CAD users to use Vault. Um, Inside all these releases of Vault, in particular Vault Professional, there were a variety of changes that came in in 2016. So we had the ability to do a new type of copy design. We had a new Vault Office Thick Client to allow those non-CAD users to put their data in that Vault. We had the ability to customize and um, define our item workflows. Uh, and we also had the ability to use the ECO control for file management as well. One of the smaller little updates that people don't realize is that any, any CAD data now integrates with Vault as well. So let's just take a look at that. So I'll just swap back to Inventor. Inside here we can see the Vault and we can see that SolidWorks part coming through. And all I'm going to do is take this design and I'm going to check it in. It'll ask me to save, so we'll just save it quickly and it'll ask me to check in that data into Vault. So we can see it's checking in the assembly and the SolarWorks file. Hitting OK, that data goes into Vault and if I swap over to my Vault window, there's my assembly. If I look at the Users tab, I can see everything underneath and if I look from the SolarWorks file at the Where Use tab, I'll be able to see that that is used in this design as well. So as you add and use that data from these other CAD systems inside Inventor, what you should find is that you're able to put that into your data management product uh, vault and then use that data within your workflows and your life cycles. So in this case, I might take my components here and move them to review, locking them all out. All we need to do to be able to do that with the SolarWorks or CATIA data is add in our rules, same rules that we do for Inventor data, except our rules this time are just to say, well, if it's a SolarWorks file, put it into an engineering lifecycle. If it's a Pro e, e file, put it into an engineering lifecycle, that sort of thing. We can also map all the properties so that they come through to Vault correctly um, in the same way that we map to Inventor as well. In addition, if you are also managing the SolidWorks data um, or you have SolidWorks and you need to manage that data directly in Vault, Vault Professional also now comes with a subscription add-in which is available on the Exchange Store um, that allows you direct integration from SolidWorks to Vault. So please do go and have a, a look at that. I'll say that's just a very quick overview of the AnyCAD capabilities. If you've got any questions, please do get in touch. Um, either at www.symmetry.co.uk and you can email info at symmetry.co.uk or via any of the numbers you can see on your screen uh, or via Twitter, LinkedIn or any other social media that you care to use. Okay, hope that's been of help and keep an eye out on our YouTube channel for more uh, of these webinars. Thank you.